So, what's so, up? No, nothing much. Uh, did you want to do anything now? Or, yeah, or what? shit, we're doing it right now. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> this is how it works. Well, yeah. you, well, you take the, you take the, the lead. <laughs> okay, well, it's not a rather unusual step for me, but yeah, I'll, I'll go for it. So, um, so <laughs> yeah, let me just introduce you to all the, the people that are listening, and hopefully there's going to be more than just you and I listening at some point, is mm-hmm. that this is Dazzy Clayton from SME Fusion Radio, from Fanbase Music Magazine. And um, hell yeah, just introduce yourself, man. Yeah, no, thanks, man. Yeah, no, as uh, uh, Trev said, that um, yeah, I'm Dazzy Clayton. I am the lunch show host on SME Fusion Radio. Mm-hmm. And it's a good one, too. Yeah. yeah, thanks, man. But between 12 and 3 on a Monday to Wednesday, and then Thursday and Fridays, I'm on from 11 a.m. till 3 p.m. That's all South African time. And then I also have a, a little blog called Fanbase Music Magazine, uh, fanbasemusicmag.co.za. Um, yeah, so that's who I am, really. <laughs> it's, but it's a little bit more than just a little thing, isn't it, the Fanbase Music Magazine? Because it, it was at one point printed magazine. No, well, it wasn't really printed. It was all online, but it was just uh, in a different form uh, a few years ago um, because I I did it on issue.com. So it it looked like an actual magazine. You can literally turn pages and stuff, but only on if it was online, you know? Yeah. And then, yeah, and then I kind of stopped doing it for a while. Um, You know, then I got the radio gig and then, you know, I wasn't really into it. Um, but I've started now to bring it back, uh, but I brought it back in like in a blog form now, you know, cause I have more control over it because when I was doing it with the, the whole magazine way of doing it, um, I didn't quite know what I was doing with the whole designing thing and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, I had a kind of a team around me, but now that I brought it back, it's me on my own and, you know, I've opened up a little website and I've had to like learn how to design it myself and do things myself, which is, it's, it's actually much better because you know, if I need something done, then I, I can get it done that day. Well, that's you know exactly I mean? it. Yeah. You don't have to rely on, yeah. on, you know, bothering somebody or asking a favor and yeah, you can exactly. just do it yourself. Yeah. And then um, also a few, when I, when I was doing it like a few years ago, it only came out once a month, but like, you know, if a story breaks today, you don't want to wait a month until you, you, you put it on Facebook or you put it out there. Well, exactly. You want, you want it done immediately, you know, and, and also I guess yeah. that's why a lot of printed music stuff is just not viable anymore. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. So now at least when something happens or if I want to put something out there, Today, I can do it today, and then something else happens tomorrow, I can do that and put it out tomorrow. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. I don't have to wait till like the first of every month to put it out like I used to. I mean, this, I'm enjoying the, the this, side so, of it now. This form of, of media is, is so different to the way it was back. When I say in my day, but in our day, when, when you know, you'd rush to the store to get the latest Metal Hammer or the Kerrang or on a weekly basis. In, when I lived in the UK, that was yeah. my. You know, that's the thing that I look forward to every Friday or Thursday whenever it came out was to get down and get to the latest Kerrang or, or whatever metal. Yeah, I remember, or whatever. Getting top 40 mag- I remember getting the Top 40 magazine, you know, back in the day. Yeah, I, I mean, and by the time you read an article magazine. about an artist, you know, that was like three months <laughs> past already. It's just ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> and how the whole world has changed since it's got so faster. Everything, the media, everything that you get is just so much faster. It's just, it's insane. Yeah, um, it's a good thing, I think, you know, with the, you know, with how social media has changed things, but it's also a bad thing because, you know, like nothing's sacred anymore, you know what I mean? Like when a band, yeah. like if a band breaks, um, you know, and like becomes quite big, they become old news very quickly because it's all over Facebook and stuff, you know what I mean? But like back in the 90s or back in the day, you know, they, they you know, it's, it's, you, you couldn't have Facebook or Instagram or wherever you get all these information from you know yeah there was there was that. there was a hype wasn't there there was like a build-up yeah, to, exactly. to yeah, that, how that, it that, happened that's the word i'm looking for there was there was like a hype of it you know what i mean now things get old very quickly i mean that, that that's why you got to be like fast paced daily with new stuff you know it's it also has taken a lot of jobs away from a lot of people the social media yeah yeah particularly particularly in, in like we're saying now that you know if something breaks then boom there it is it's out in the world whereas before you yeah. reliant on other people to you know those people that had jobs and to to print stuff or or be on the mailing list of you know of actual physical product i mean that i remember how i discovered terrorvision from the uk i was living there they had a, an article in either i think it was probably kerrang 
in one of the the magazines and it said sign up or, or send this form in to to get news and a free cd and i was like shit yeah i want to do that of course you know anything free is great yeah and i filled it in sent it off the next minute you know i was getting free singles cd singles from them i didn't have to buy it and everything like that and then next minute they exploded massive huge yeah i mean so i did exactly like the movie. same with lithium that's exactly how we managed oh, um, the whole lithium scenario was exactly that we we had a, a fan club and people wrote in and we replied we and the, well the guys were, i didn't reply but you know the band replied and signed stuff and sent stuff and whatever and and that's how we built up the the fan base to use a, to, yeah, to no. not use a better word than fan base you know <laughs> yeah i know exactly Sorry, Trevor. I don't know if you can hear the dogs uh, in the background. I just do apologize to you. It's going to be listening that's, to this, but, That's um, not a problem, man. What, what quarantine, is... quarantine rules. You know, we can't exactly meet up. This is the only way we can actually meet up. And yeah, when you're you at see, home, that's a, you see now, that's another thing it. now. The chances of us actually meeting face to face and doing this kind of conversation, yeah. recording it in the studio is just was never going to happen probably i mean you never say never yeah, but yeah. you know shit you know that's that's how it is right now but so. you're on one side of south africa i'm on the other side of south africa, south yeah. africa. anyway and so y- even if there wasn't yeah. any quarantine rules we'll still probably be doing it from home but i must apologize uh, nothing, nothing to apologize no no they, nothing to apologize rule, about house, yeah i was just gonna say who rules the house <laughs> Which one? How many dogs have you got? Another dog. <laughs> I got four dogs and uh, one cat, and we're car- currently looking after two other cats because of the whole lockdown thing. Oh, uh, they office, yeah, they office cats at my wife's work, so no one was going to be there to feed them. So we kind of take taking them in for the lockdown, you know. So uh, and how you got, how you guys handling? All right. Yeah, I know we are right. So yeah, the wife, uh, she works from home now anyway. You know what I mean? She's she's at least you know her her job is safe because you know what she would do at work, she'll just be doing at home. Yeah. And I've always worked from home anyway. You know, I do the show from home and yeah, uh, you know, yeah. I work on the magazine from home. So you know, it hasn't really much changed except that we're all in each other's space now. You know what I mean? <laughs> she used to go to work now. She's at home. You know. So yeah. The, um, but other yeah, than that, now we cool. You know what I mean? So so yeah. where did the 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 love of animals come from then? I don't know. I've always kind of been into animals and um, I don't know if you know, but like I do this thing called rocking for the paws and stuff yes. like that. Where you had a quite a successful one just before COVID, didn't you? Um, yeah, the last year was, look, we do it once a year and uh, they're, they're getting better and better. You know, there's been a few years where it's not been as good, but like, you know, there, there's been some really good years where we make quite a big, good bit of money for the Rudaput SPCA. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's who we do it for, you know, rocking for the paws. And then we raise some money for the Rotoports SPCA. And what basically what it is, is we just get a whole bunch of bands together. We get a venue and they just play. And then all the proceeds that we make, uh, we, you know, at the at the door entrance fee or raffles, all that kind of stuff just goes straight to the Rotoport SPCA. And, um, what, what goes yeah, into, you know what I mean? into, into making one of these things happen? I mean, it sounds like it's a hell of a lot of work. Um, yeah, well, we, 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 we like to start planning like in the beginning of the year or even like the year before, like as the one's finished then we'll give it a, a few, maybe three or four months and then we'll start planning the next one. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, uh, so it's just to really get the bands on board. You know, you want to try and get a big band on board, you know, one that's going to be a crowd puller, you know, look, you know, th- th- that's the nice thing about the music industry and the, 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 the less known bands, they always want to help, which is a great thing. You know, we will never turn down a band just because they're not big enough or something yeah, like that. But yeah. like, it does help to get a, a, a crowd puller or a, a main act, if you want to call it that, you know, on, on the bill. And then you just got to get the right amounts of people. And then it's uh, maybe trying to get a few sponsors on board, a few people who, who give away things to raffle. And, you know, I mean, so the, you get these, all sort of things, and, these sort of things can't be easy to, to get people to um, part with money, particularly in South Africa. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know. Look, um, uh, Nicole from the SBCA, she does all the... the um, uh, she she's the one who what's the word you were looking for but like you know like she's she's the one who raises all the money for the SPCA that's fundraiser job, yeah yeah but that's the word there we go sorry yeah fundraiser so you know she has good context and she has good people skills to do all that so but yeah it is hard you know what I mean um, but we've had some good people um, I don't know if I can mention people but yeah like you go for it you can mention anybody that you want to. Okay, cool. You yeah, know, Marshall Music has been great over the years. You know, they've given away headsets or, you know, like quite um, expensive headphones and headsets. And um, oh, big shout you know, out so to Marshall Music. Thank you. Yeah, no, they, they've been very good. Uh, and every year, 
they've given away something, you know, that uh, we can raffle up or give away as a competition and, you know, or something like that. Uh, we've had a few people given paintings. Uh, I can't quite remember the painter's name, but he was, a, he was an amazing painter. Uh, he did it the one year and then that went off for quite a bit of money as a raffle. Um, we, the, the bands that get involved, you know, they've um, get, literally given away their merch. They, they said we can sell their merch at the, at the gig. And then, you know, they don't even take any money for what's been sold. It goes straight yeah, to the roof, yeah. but, you know. Um, so, yeah, the, you know, the, the, there's, been, we, there's been some really good people throughout the years who have actually helped us and, and you know, and done it. So, well, that's great. Know, I mean, a, so a nice shout out to Marshall Music and to the artists and all the bands that help with rocking uh, for the pause. Yeah, I know, for sure. Rudaport, Rudaport, SPCA, you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, you know, you... You could do all the all of the SPCAs if you wanted to, but like it's just best to for me to you know I, I live in Rudaport, you know in in Johannesburg, yeah, yeah. So it's just best for me to focus on that one. I've made good, really good friends with Nicole. She even came to my wedding and stuff, you know. So I'm really good friends with her, and me and her, you know, every year get together and we make this thing happen. So so how did how did the 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 lunch show with SME Fusion Radio uh, come into play? <laughs> that that's actually quite uh, a good question and quite a cool story. Um, I'm also, well, yeah, I'm also like a band manager or uh, you know, I, or PR person if you want to call it that. Where I work with bands and I send me music out to radio stations and things like that. And um, I, was, I just, I just want to stop you right there because as part okay. of as part of my my task with uh, well the, the company that I own this this Lone Wolf Media essay that is one of the hardest things to do is to get the radio stations to play the music because as you know and we discussed this ages ago yeah. that to get to all the radio stations is almost an impossible task you still sent me a spreadsheet with every yeah. single radio station that you had contacted previously and yeah. i just looked at this list and i was like how the fuck do you get that out to every single radio station and three quarters of them don't reply the other quarter, that, the email addresses are defunct. They don't even work anymore. That is a really selfless task doing that for bands. So big up yeah, to you no. for, for doing that. It's crazy. I don't know how you do no, it. Thanks, man. But John, no, the, the worst thing about that is like, like you say, we, you and I both have this vast spreadsheet of, you know, radio stations that we could send music to, but the ones that actually even reply, you're very lucky if you get like maybe like a hundred of them to actually reply at some time. A hundred? You've got to be kidding. Things. I'm lucky if I get one response. <laughs> and then sometimes it takes months for them to reply. Like that, that, like that single's like already been a hit and, and you moved on to the next single and then they're only replying like months later to the other single that you've sent out. Like Exactly. And the one person that I find responds all the time is Isaac Banks. Yeah, no, from Australia, he's yeah. really, really good. Uh, Valley, yeah, what's he, it? What is it? Valley FM, ninety-five, eighty-nine point five. I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. Sweet Valley Sounds or something like that. Sweet, yeah, that exactly. You know, he he's really good, and he also has a passion for it. You know what I mean? Um, you know, he, for especially for the the less known indie kind of bands. You know, he he has a big passion to actually help them out, and I agree with you there. You know, he's really awesome. So, so carry on with the, the SME Fusion. How did that all come about? Yeah, no. So, so I was sending out my music to, um, to different radio stations. And there used to be a radio station called All Time Radio. And uh, I, I'll, my current uh, station manager, Vincent, or Vince, he used to work for All Time Radio. So um, I, used to be, uh, I used to chat to him and send my music to him. And then um, he left All Time Radio or All Time Radio fell apart or something like that. And then um, the one day he messaged me on Facebook and he just said, look, you know, he's looking to start up a new radio station now. Um, will I be interested? And at that time, I hadn't really done a full show. I've done segments on a few. Uh, there was this uh, radio station in, in the USA. I used to have this thing called uh, the, the Dazzy's Report, <laughs> where I, I used to go on every Friday, once a week, just for like, say, five minutes or so. Okay. And I used to do like mu musical birthdays of the past week. And I used to like do a uh, like news that has happened in the past week, you know, musical news that has happened in the past week. Yeah. That was um, as much radio experience that I've had. I um, mean, you know, I didn't have to do an actual show. It was just like a little five minute once a week segment. Um, but anyway, he, uh, Vince messaged me on Facebook and said, you know, would I be interested? So I was like, okay, well, like, you know, I want to get into radio and do this. So he has my chance. You know what I mean? What, what year was so this? I gave it a go. 
Um, for, I think it was about three years ago. So what we're in okay. now, we uh, okay. 2020. So, uh, yeah, I've been with SME Fusion Ray just over three years, around right about there, you know. So okay. Um, yeah. So um, yeah. So I gave it a go. The first show was a nightmare for me um, because <laughs> I kept on losing, I kept on losing internet connection, and um, it was just crazy, crazy. Um, and I thought to myself, yo, do I, do I even have what it takes to to do this? You know what I mean? I kept on with it and carried on. And now, like I said, three and a half years later, here I am still with the lunch show. And um, I think I'm a little bit better than my, my first show. So, you but, know what but I mean? But that's the thing, though. How, how did you get over it? We, we, you must have been bricking yourself at, at the thought of like like a live thing. You know, not, yeah, not, not, no, not a sure. pre-recorded thing like this. This is pre-recorded in case anybody's wondering. But a live thing. Dude, the night before, I, I'm not lying to you. I would say I didn't sleep because I was just so nervous about it. You know what I mean? But the, hang on a you, second, yeah. Hang on a second. Is this got something to do with your sleep patterns now? Because I know you don't sleep very well. You are, you're awake <laughs> at crazy ass times in the morning. <laughs> yeah, no, it probably has something to do with that. But that was playing in the back of my mind, like shit. I got a radio thing to do. Uh, <laughs> day, you know what I mean? How, how's it gonna go? And then it didn't go very well. And then I was like, uh, yeah, we go. But you know, um, <laughs> yeah, we go. You know this is what the rest of my of DJ life is going to be like. Oh shit! No, I can't do this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know exactly. Um, but you know, when they say you kind of got a calling, like I don't know how to explain it, but like it sometimes it just feels like that's what you were meant to do. Like I, yeah, I've never you were born for it. Life, yeah. Once I got into the groove of it and I was doing it all right, then you know, like I used to read from a, a read read from a um a script. I yeah. used to write out what I'm going to say. In my next speech link, okay, naive. There was Nirvana with smells like teen spirit. Now you're gonna. I used to write out all of that. Now when I put the mark on, it just comes. You know what I mean? I don't know how to yeah. explain it, but it's I, like a confidence building thing. Is once you get over that first hurdle, yeah. the next one's a little bit easier, and so on and so on. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No. For the, so you know what I like about uh, your I'm show not, is that it's it it's it's a good blend. There's metal. There's rock. There's chilled out vibes there's old classics there's new music it, it's a good blend no thanks yeah that's what i'm that's what i'm going for you know what i mean um i always have the slogan and whenever i end off my show i always say keep building the scene and that's what i'm trying to even the fan base music magazine that's what i'm trying to do that's so that that's what i'm i'm aiming for is to keep building the scene and you know look um my show is going to be 90 percent rock or metal but that doesn't mean i'm not going to play like your 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 ABBA. Next pop song. Yeah, you know, something like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And every, um, every time you play ABBA, I just can't help my, my right foot tends to start tapping along to the beat. <laughs> and I know I've said that in the chat room when you went through yeah, the show. It's yeah, like, yeah. damn it, what is it about ABBA? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know exactly. They made some good music. But you know what I mean? So it's not all going to be rock and metal, but I, I try and keep it 90% that. But like, you know, I'm not going to be scared to play like a bit of pop or whatever, what else, you know, type of thing. Um, do you find that, yeah, that kind of, kind do, you get, do you get do you get like disconcerting with when you look at the chat room and you see like six people or eight people in the chat room? Yeah, you know, look, some shows are better than others, and uh, that's what that's also why I try and tag the bands or at least let the bands know I'm going to be playing them because that does actually help build up the the chat room and they, they think, oh well, you know, Dazzy's going to be playing my my track, let me get into the chat room, and then it does get the chat room a bit busy, but there are times when it's literally me. Maybe you and then our good friend Gilby, who's in the chat room. And that's Gilby, really I, I swear Gilby actually lives in the studio. <laughs> I swear he yeah, does work for Presto Electrical. Hi, boys, Otto and Sean. <laughs> he actually lives at the studio or lives in your microphone, wherever he is that, you know, I, think, I, I reckon he lives <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah. We, we actually, we actually, um, what's the word? We, we actually um, can confirm that he is our longest listener on SME Future Radio and the first listener. Uh, oh, on okay. SME Fusion Radio, when we first started out, um, he was the first person to to tune in, and um, he hasn't looked back since. So like you say, he tunes into all the DJ shows, not just mine. Yes. You know, yes. he's in the nighttime, the daytime. When he's ever on, he's on, and he's in the chat room. And yeah, so he's a he's a big listener of, uh, and supporter. So, shout out to Gilby. Keep going, bro. No, no, Keep thanks going. very much. Well done, Gilby. Thanks for that. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> so, how, how are you handling with the the whole COVID thing? And uh, does it does it affect the the radio station? How you do your shows? Because I know you do it from home anyway. So, does does it change? Yeah, uh, well, yeah. Look, look. You know, it doesn't really affect me. Um, because you know, I always did it from home anyway. So I just close my door and 
you know, there I go. So it hasn't really affected me. It's just like, like I said, you know, we've got two extra cats that are walking over your keyboard and things like that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so that's been a bit of a challenge. <laughs> no, but they're actually very good cats. But no, no but other than that, you know, I've been okay. Um, I've just found, I don't know how you feel if you actually do go out for, for essential buying at the shops. Yep. It just feels very depressing at times with everyone with masks and, you know, it just feels like, like there's a real plague going on. You know what I mean? I know there is. Like, yeah, yeah, well, exactly. I was just going to say, yeah, there is actually a plague going on. Right? Yeah, but it, to think that, it's just that, like, that it's not. Yeah, it's just like weird that, that, you know, when you actually go out and experience, this is how it is. You know what I mean? And we don't quite know how we're going to get out of it. Do you know what I mean? Like, this just, could be the new norm. Exactly. That's what I'm worried about. You know, so you do think about things like that and, I don't know, but, you know, you know I, there, there's, there's a different sort of attitude in South Africa about <laughs> these sort of things. Um, and one of the things that South Africans do is laugh at ourselves very, very easily. Yeah. We take the piss out of everything and we can take it on the chin and, and just get on with life. But there is an attitude that I've, and I've only been out, I think, twice in six weeks or something like that, because, well, I don't have any need to go out anyway. But yeah. there just seems to be like, people are just so aloof about the whole thing. They don't really care. It's like, well, yeah, yeah. You know, I'll walk around without a mask on. I don't give a shit. Yeah. No, I've also experienced that. It's like, we went, we went out to the shops yesterday and I also experienced that we walk around with our masks and, you know, and people are just like walking around like it's as if it's a normal day. And especially now that we've gone from stage five to stage four, cause we, we went out from stage five and look, it was dead. There was like no one in the shops, but like stage four, it's literally the same thing as what it's always been. It's just the, the malls are busy. The, the car parks are busy. It's just that the, the odd person now has a mask on, you know what I mean? And they, yeah, yeah. you wait longer yeah. to get into game because they, they're only letting a few people in at a time. And they, sanitizing you see, that's clever. You see, that's clever. Letting a few yeah. people in at a time. Why can't they do that with the bottle stores? Yeah. No, you, you don't exactly, drink, right? Yeah. I do. I, I, well, I have an occasional one, but yeah, I, I'm not like a every weekend or every once a month even drinking okay. you know what i mean so, okay. yeah. see that's yeah. clever I, fi- I find that clever that that they let in, in a few people at a time but i i, I don't yeah. understand why they can't do that with the bottle store yeah yeah because i mean it's no, a, <laughs> to some people that's an essential item <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. particularly particularly during these sort of crazy times you know everybody needs a little something to get by yeah and even the the the, the i'm smoking ban thing you know i can yeah. understand I can understand to a degree with the whole drinking thing because if you've had too many, you might just go start walking in the road and causing cuck with people. But like, yeah, the smoking ban, I just I don't get that one. You know what I mean? That's the one I'm like. Well, I wow. was you know listening I mean? to to somebody um, having a conversation and uh, one of the one of the podcasts that I, one of the many podcasts that I listen to, and they were saying the reason why that they've banned it, alcohol and uh, smoking is purely because of it lowers your immune system, which means you're more susceptible to getting COVID. Yeah. That makes sense well, to I me. Suppose, yeah, I suppose that makes sense to me also now, you know what I mean? But I don't know. Still, it's, uh, a, it's, 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 <laughs> yeah. it's a bit drastic. Yeah, yeah. This, this, this is not, think, you know, America's, you know, 50s or 60s, when, or whenever it was when they did the prohibition, 40s, whatever, whenever it was. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly, man. So oh, what do you, what do you, you're just what, living in crazy times. Yeah, it is nuts. Absolutely nuts. So do you find that during COVID, the lockdown, that your lifestyles changed? Like eating, obviously exercise, but do you find things like that have changed? Yeah, I, I think I, I haven't weighed myself, but I, I honestly think I put on an extra 20 kgs or something. Why, why is that? Did, are, you, are you eating worse? Yeah, I don't know. I think it's just, you know, you walk to the, you know, you, you, I think I go to the fridge about like five times, you know, and it's like this is the same thing is there, you know, it's not like anything has changed, but I'll go back to the fridge and check, hmm, what's in here now? Let me, <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> Let me take yeah, this I'll now, go, you know, Oh, that looks good. I'll have, I'll have a little bite of that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? So, yeah, no, definitely I think that has changed, <laughs> you know, that I'm eating more. Yeah, um, it's, it's, I just find it weird. I mean, I guess, for you and I, we're both in the, in the similar position that we don't really um, need to go out. We, we do our jobs from mm-hmm. home. So I guess you and I are probably handling it a lot better than people that have actual jobs that need to get out. Like the warden, my wife, she needs to sell houses and, and meet clients and stuff. And she can't do that. So, you know, that's, that's pretty harsh. But, yeah. for, but for us, it's, it's pretty normal. But it still feels, you're still affected by it. Yeah. 
Look, um, look, uh, my heart goes out to like people like your wife, and I think there's going to be also a lot of people who are actually going to lose their jobs over here because there's just no jobs going around at the moment. What you would normally be able to do, you can't do. You know what I mean? And there's a there was a scarcity a of jobs worry. already. Now it's even worse. Yeah, you know, and but people like you and I, we we okay that way. My wife would also be okay because she's whatever she's doing at work, she's doing at home. Yeah, um, but it's just also being in each other's space, like now twenty four seven. You know, like you actually had that moment where you know she, my wife would go to work and then you, you know, but not, to be in each other's space, it's also it's challenging also for marriage. You know what I mean? Oh but, yeah, absolutely. I agree. I agree. I mean, yeah. I've got I've got my eight year old at home and I do homeschooling and all that sort of stuff. So that hasn't changed. Like I said, it hasn't really changed that much for for me. But it still just feels weird that I can't just get in a car without some fucking suffocating mask on and go out to the <laughs> yeah, shop and exactly. get a six pack for the weekend or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It's just weird. I think, I think no, it's no. going to, the whole landscape is going to change. You know, I, I don't I know. How, I don't know how to put it. It's just, like I said earlier, is this the new norm? Exactly. And that's, that's, that's the worrying thing. I, you know, I don't think anyone quite knows how we're going to get out of this. You know what I mean? But um, I saw this, thing on, I saw this thing on Facebook the other day that um, um, could uh, like a drive in, be the norm for seeing a live band. So yes, I saw that. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Field, so instead of you like going to a field like on top of each other, you actually go into your car. It's going to be like you're watching a big screen uh, at the drive-in. You know, like you're watching a film, except you're watching the band on stage on the big screen. Sometimes, you know what but I mean. This could <laughs> open a whole new world of problems with traffic and the, yeah. the emissions of the car and the environment and you, yeah. you know. <laughs> I mean, God damn, just stay at home <laughs> yeah, and just yeah. not do anything. Yeah, yeah. Just live stream yeah, it and yeah. headbang to nobody. With You can't put your arms around yeah. somebody and, you know, crank your beers together and have a good one. Yeah. What have you been uh, thinking about all these uh, live streams on Facebook now? It's like, there's been some really good ones. And then, you know, like people actually put a lot of thought into like, I uh, saw Art Matthews and, uh, you know, uh, Arnie Carson from Springwood Meagles and they actually got great production doing it live. But then these other people that like, oh, I've had a few beers, I'm going to go on online now and then, you know, <laughs> the guitar's out of tune and, you know, that type of thing. You, you, know, do, I mean? like, do, you, you know that this, this chat thing is to be, you don't have to be 100% honest. That's just who I am. But you want my honest opinion? Yeah. I think out of all of them, I think I have watched one and it was mediocre. Is it? Yeah, it's, uh, it's just yeah. weird. Somebody is, who's in the business, I just, I don't, know, I don't know what it is. It's not that I'm being lazy to watch it. It's just like, okay, time management is one. Um, yeah. do, do I like the artist? You know, is it my kind of vibe? You know, have I got time to, to watch somebody self-gratify themselves on Facebook Live or whatever, you know, it's platform they choose? Do I really want to go through yeah. that? You know, and, and then I just, I just find it like, you know, giving it a like and say, that was awesome. And, and the back of your head, you go, and that was fucking terrible. <laughs> I, I can't do that. I, I can't, I can't be that person. You know, I, I, I can only be honest, but I don't want to be honest to the point where the artist says, well, fuck you then. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so uh, look, you know think, <laughs> everything's got to be PC the these is, days, I, isn't it? You know, you, you just got to be yeah, within think, the, the white lines and just be, ah, yes, that was wonderful. Thank you so much. And then switch up and go, oh my God, what a pile of turd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, the thing is, I've seen some good ones, you know, like, like I mentioned, like um, Art Matthews, he was on his uh, actual, actually on his rooftop. Yeah, yeah, I saw that one. I, I didn't see that one. That's not the one I'm referring to that was mediocre before Art Matthews gets in touch with me. Um, I didn't see it. <laughs> I just saw that he was doing it, but I didn't actually watch yeah, it. Just, yeah. just, 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 I don't yeah. want anybody to come to me and say, who the fuck are you? Yeah. <laughs> um, I enjoyed Art, I, I enjoyed Art Matthews. I enjoyed Arnie Carstens, but there has been a few where I'm like, I'm, it's more like, you know, if you're going to do something like this, put some thought into it, put some production into it at least, you know? Yes. Make I saw sure you mention it on the fan base yeah. uh, thing or on one of your, one of yeah. your um, Facebook posts that um, you thought that the, um, the honor costers one, the production that was absolutely amazing. And the odd Matthews one. So yeah, yeah no, you're right. You know, if you're going to do something like this, you really are um, literally bearing your soul and your heart of, of your art that you do to a shitload of people. Yeah. And there's probably more people watching online than there is actually going to a gig because it's more accessible for starters. 
And yeah. um, if you're going to do it, you're absolutely correct. You know, do it properly. And there's also, there's also they, they, they put out a tip jar. Like you can actually donate money or, or, or tip them for playing, which is good. This is, a, the, like you say, the new norm. No, of, I see. You know, That's clever. To make money, but at least do something good with it then. You know what I mean? Like I saw uh, 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 the one musician, he was, I'm going to play covers now, you know, any requests. And then you'll like start playing the song and then you're like, oh, I don't know how to play it. Then you like move on to next one. Oh, like, you well, see. Yeah. No thought put into that. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> that that so, just, you see, that, that would just, it's, that would grind my gears. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, you're right. You know, there's got to be some sort of production level. There's got to be, you've got to put some thought into it. It's not just like, uh, you, yeah, you can't just be a fucking idiot, you know? Make it right. Yeah, make it yeah. make it sound good. You know, get a, get a desk, proper audio desk input, and all that sort of stuff. And and I mean, like that, I'd I'd imagine for a band, you know, where there's more than just one person on an acoustic guitar thinking they're God or whatever, to get a band together with the proper desk, mixing it and putting it out there. Now that technicality and that yeah. equipment involved to do that, I just wouldn't understand. How the how, where do you connect everything? to have yeah, that exactly. live how, how the hell do you do that the technology is insane yeah. and this this yeah, brings and us right more. sorry i was just gonna say this brings us right back to the beginning of a conversation like how this has changed how media is involved you know music and, and magazines and all that sort of stuff that the technology moves at such a rapid pace how do you keep abreast of everything it's just insane exactly yeah just like get, something like something totally different now but like you know i'm uh, I, I like watching these talk shows um like you know and especially in america conan o'brien and all of this and now that they can't actually do live shows in front of a crowd they've had to literally do shows from home and i, I was like laughing at that because conan he said um he didn't know how to use uh zoom in at one stage and you know he has he he says he's, he it's quite bad to think about but he has a, a, a team that makes the show happen. And now he's yeah. at home and he's got to figure out how to switch a computer on and how to download Zoom or how to, you know, do this and make sure your mic right. And he had to do it all on his own. And it's just like, it's crazy that, you know, this is what it's become that, you know. But look at you, this is your first time using using Zoom and, and everybody out there that we're using Zoom Thank to you. record this. Thank you, Zoom. That's very kind of you. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, there you are. You know, you're a half an hour in or however long this is and you're using it perfectly fine. So it's doable, isn't it? I mean, it's accessible and it's free. Yeah, it's, no, it's, it's not sure. as if you, you know, you have to pay for it. I mean, you can if you want to, if you're going to start saving your stuff up into the cloud or anything, but it allows you to record chats and to download your chats and to edit your chats and then release them to, you know, the, on YouTube or whatever your preferred method is or channel. Yeah. That's crazy. I just ask you, how, how are you recording this by, by just for interest sake? Zoom. Yeah, yeah, this this actual conversation. I'm using Zoom. Zoom's got a built oh, right? Yeah, if you if you're the host of a of a conversation of of a um, a chat session like this or a meeting or yeah. whatever you want to call it, there's a record function you can record it and you can mute people and do all sorts. Oh, okay. Well, and and, and the quality that comes out of it is actually really really like a good solid high quality yes each person that's you having a conversation needs to have a a good mic i mean i've got my rode microphone that i use for my digital camera and i uh, just plug it into my pc and use the software that zoom provides for free and you know there you go and in no yeah. ways am i associated or affiliated with zoom i'm just saying that the <laughs> yeah no we're busy is, plugging <laughs> zoom we're, we're, we're plugging zoom it's, that really good product, product, plug it. it's working well for us <laughs> yeah i mean that, this is that's, that's what i'm saying i mean you is this the new norm? Is this is this how things yeah, are to be done? Exactly. I, mean, I, know, yeah. I, know, I know you you um, are going to be you do interviews, uh, whether it be written or, or audio and stuff like that. And we've we've discussed this off, you know, not here or anywhere else, but you know, on our own in private conversation. And you know, this is the way forward as far as I'm concerned. Okay, at some well, point. Well, that's actually why I asked you how are you recording this because in my mind's like um, running 100 miles. Of, how am I going to put this on my radio show? If I had to interview this band now using Zoom, it will actually work quite well. How do I record it? So, no, this is a, like a good um, op eye opener for myself. Even, well, like. it was for me. I mean, like I said right in the beginning, you know, um, our mutual friend Brian Kroll, um, he was helping yeah. me out and he was saying to me, you know, um, he, okay, let, let, me, let me tell you the story of, of, of how I met Brian Kroll. Now, wow. I met Brian Kroll through SME Fusion Radio on your show. Yeah, okay. Okay, when you played his music, I was like, oh, this is kind of catchy. This is cool. Yeah. And then Gilby was just like pumping 
killer crawl music, killer crawl, killer crawl. And I was like, okay, this is cool. And then I emailed, um, and then I thought, okay, I just, you know, left out of my mind, you know, like I do with, with most music, uh, you know, it's, it, some of it doesn't stick, some of it does stick. And, and his music kind of stuck there in the background. I wasn't a huge fan at first, but I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. And then um, Gilby, um, who lives in your microphone, sent me a, <laughs> an email of all of um, Brian's music. And he said, Brian said uh, that uh, Gilby could send it out to whoever I wanted. And I was like, fuck, well, that's kind of cool. Downloaded yeah. it, listened to it on my iTunes. And I thought, shit, you know, this, this is actually really good production. And, and I can actually hear what the singer is singing. Most bands these days is very hard to find. And I've told Brian all of this. It's very hard to find somebody, a singer, that you can actually hear that is rock music. It's mostly screaming or shouting or whatever, you know? And yeah. um, for me, when I listen to music, it's just, I digress a bit, is it's that I, I listen to the music. I, I listen to the drums and the guitars of, and because that's what I started off with when I started doing music. And then slowly, I was like, I can actually hear the singer. And I, I, I don't know how to pronounce his surname, but Mike Worth, I think, Worth or, or something like that, Mike's vocals. And I've told Brian this is, is so... It's like a Miles Kennedy. Uh, it's like when Miles Kennedy sings, you can actually hear what he's singing. Now, Mike Worth's vocals no, okay, yeah. are exactly like that. And over the next couple of um, months, uh, I got to chat to Brian more and more regularly. And Brian and I were chatting so much that I actually said to him, well, we should do an interview, you know, like a, a podcast. And, and um, somebody, I don't know who it was, but somebody said, go and watch, it's probably Brian, because his source of information is just absolutely ridiculous. Go and watch. Yeah, I can, um, I can, uh, I can vouch for that. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, when you talk to Brian, it's just like, you just actually got to shut up and let him speak because the stories that <laughs> yeah. he has is just, it's, it's almost <laughs> overwhelming. And he actually said to me, he said, be honest with me. Tell me what you, what you actually think of me. And, and I said to him, he said, dude, the information that you have is so fucking much that it's almost impossible to actually take everything on board. It's like your head becomes dizzy with information. Yeah. And, but I mean, it's useful information. It's not just blurb, you know, but anyway, I, 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 I keep digressing. I keep talking so much crap anyway, but maybe that's why I'm doing the podcast then because I'm good at it. Who knows? But yeah, well, that's what you need to be, so I, I guess, I guess it helps, right? <laughs> Yeah, it does. <laughs> but um, so he said, well, why don't we do like a chat thing? And, and then we were trying to figure out, do we go to an actual podcast website and sign up for that? Do we buy a microphone and ask questions? And then he answers and then we edit it, splice it together and make it sound, you know, inverted commas live. And then, then the warden comes along and says, I'm using Zoom. And I was like, well, what the hell is Zoom now? Hey, just like you mm. with me just now. What is Zoom? How do I use it? What, what do I use it for? And um, she showed me briefly. She was in with the, with the Remax Southern Africa. Um, that's what my wife works with. Um, and like a, a meeting kind of thing and listen to people talk about all sorts of things. And I was like, hell, that looks kind of cool. You can do video and audio and you can record it. And, that, and that's how it came about. And, and the person that pushed me to do this was Brian Kroll because he has a way of, of making sense of things that are sound complicated, but are actually really simple. So a big shout out to Brian Kroll for, for the push and the nudge. And he knows what it means because I've thanked him many times since, but <laughs> fuck it. I forget what I was talking about now. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're just praising Brian Kroll. <laughs> uh, okay. We're praising Brian Kroll. Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. And that's, that's how I got his music. And, I love the fact that I got this, I discovered his music through SME, through you and through that ever present Gilby that lives in your microphone. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, a big shout out to you guys. And, and obviously you guys, um, I, I can't remember how, how we met, but I know it was, I, I think it was just me sending music to the radio station for lithium. I think it's got to, uh, it's got to be through lithium. I think because yeah, I, I, as I as you know, I'm a huge fan of lithium, and you obviously work very closely with them. I think that's how we we me and you uh, met through lithium. Yeah. Yeah, because I I, I remember um, Super Darius um, being in the chat room, and the first time that I, I, I think you, when you do the chat tango thing, you can you know make your name or whatever you know you can set, uh, your, yeah, yeah. set your name, and I put a lithium you know yeah and, and, yes, and super yes, doris yes, lost yes. his shit he was like is this lithium is this the real lithium <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and no, i remember that, that, that i remember that well now yeah that's how you came in 
yeah, yeah. and then you you started seeing us some other cool bands and all that stuff and yeah, but you see that's we, you see that's the way it should be though shouldn't it though you know you bring as an as a representative of an artist or an artist when you bring music in it shouldn't just be about the self it should be about um other bands too yeah 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 and no, i think i think that's also the best way to go forward you know what i mean because if you're just working with the one band um yeah it's a good thing you know you have more time for the band but you know like I, I can't even mention how many bands you have actually turned me on to just by, you know, all the bands that you've worked with in the past and sent it to me. Mm. Uh, so that's like really cool. You know what I mean? So, yeah. I'll, You're welcome. I'll that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, no, definitely. Thank you. Thank you. Keep doing it. Like I said to you now, obviously to you, you've got the, you first of all got the support of fan based music magazine and I can give you the full support because I own the the, the, the magazine. Um I and, don't own SME Fusion and, Radio, but uh, we'll give you ninety percent of uh, the support that I'm allowed to say, so, yeah, you know that's and the cool. nice thing is Lone Wolf Media SA is mine and solely mine, so you've got our support without any you cool. know need require permissions from anybody else. Yeah, yeah, no, that, 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 that's how it should be, you know what I mean? We should be, especially in this industry, this industry can rip you apart. I'm sure you've had experience, how uh, can rip you apart and how people can rip you apart. But you Does he? I, I can go into together. a very long yeah. story and tell you all about it, but I cannot. <laughs> <laughs> We've discussed yeah. this off air, we know exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, but you know what I mean. It, it, it can get, it can be a very vicious industry. And it's ruthless, it yeah. It's it's cutthroat. Everybody's yeah. stepping over everybody else, and particularly now because everybody's looking after themselves more so than ever before. Yeah. So people are being ruthless yeah. and 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 bastards. I just don't think that's the way forward. Though I think you need to actually work together to actually. Oh, a hundred percent agree. But you know what? You can't take out of people is greed. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and that's exactly. a problem. You, you know, it's all within us to be to be greedy and, and selfish, but it's how you manage that, those emotions and feelings before clouds of judgment and everything like that. So. Look, we all need to put money or food on the table. We, need, we all need money in our lives and things like that. But like, you know, when you actually get vicious and ugly and you don't really care about your fellow person who you've been working with for the last few months or years, you know, it's just... It's, it's, that's I when you know, know you've lost your way. Yeah, exactly. And that's not the kind of person I want to be. And I'm sure you also. So. Oh, no, God, no. No, so, I'm, not, know, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not that ruthless person. Yeah, I know, for sure, definitely. I mean, well, look, I'm quite excited about Lone Wolf. And like I said, you know, you got my support, you got fan base, and uh, STM Fusion Radio. You know support, what was amazing uh, when you just said Lone Wolf there? Your dog howled. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs>